Welcome to the Keeping the Nostalgia Alive show. I am your host, Billy Powell. You're listening to this on Keeping the Nostalgia Alive. That is all one word, keepingthenostalgialive.podbean.com. Some of you may be listening to this on HoosierHysteria.net, where it also streams. And we also have a YouTube channel that we just rolled out yesterday called the Keeping the Nostalgia Alive show. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, we have over, this will be our, I think, our 175th episode. We have interviews from Kent Benson, Gene Cady, Rick Mount, um, uh, you name it from the uh, from stuff that's happened in the state of Indiana. Most of it is basketball related, but we're going to step out a little bit today. We're going to have a special issue uh, of uh, football, especially Indiana University Hoosiers football. Um, and, uh, this should be pretty fun today. Um, I was born on November 25th, 1967. The normal doctor that was going to deliver me was not in the hospital that day. He was at the old Oaken Bucket game between Indiana and Purdue. And we are going to chat with someone today that uh, got to enjoy that magical year at Indiana University that went on to play in the Rose Bowl. And uh, hopefully I will not jack up his name, but uh, his name is Dave Corona. I probably jacked it up already. And Dave, thank you so much for taking some time out and help keep the nostalgia alive and and talking about your, uh, your career and your life and your love and your passion for the game of football. Well, thank you. Uh, yes, you called me the virus. <laughs> <laughs> so my apology. I knew I was going to do it. I did that also to um, uh, Hallie, Haley Berry. It was Hallie Berry, not Haley Berry. And of course, he 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 uh, corrected me several times during the interview. I just couldn't get it down pat. So I'm just going to call you Dave for the rest of the interview, and you can interject your last name if you like occasionally. Oh, that's no problem. Nobody knows me by my last name anyway. So you were, yes. I, I take it you were born and raised in the state of Ohio. Can you tell us a little bit about your family and being in what part of Ohio? Toledo, Ohio. Although I was born in the East Coast where my parents met when my father was in World War II. We lived our whole life in Toledo, Ohio until I went away to college. Then I, then I went back to Toledo until about two years ago. Now I'm in the middle of Indiana. So I'm back to the Hoosier State for the first time since I was in college. But uh, our family was sports-oriented. I guess we're from Eastern Europe where uh, athletics seem to run in the, in the families. My father was – we had 10 of us go to college and – Athletic scholarships. My father went to Bowling Green University on a basketball scholarship, but he was drafted in the World War II. I had uh, cousins that went to Michigan and Ohio University. I went to Indiana University. My brother was a golfer. He went to Toledo. I had uh, another cousin that's a golfer who was all state, went to Toledo University. Uh, so athletics was always in our family and growing up that was about all we ever did so i got a, a lot of preparation before i got to high school high school i played three sports i loved basketball the most but i was better in football and that's what indiana university gave me a scholarship for in 1964 but uh it was rough once I went. Once I got to college, I realized how fast everybody was and how much bigger they were than I was. And I was recruited as a quarterback and played two years as a defensive back. And one year I was a backup to Frank Stavroff on the 1966 Hoosier football team. The stadium there is a is a lot nicer now than it was in uh, 64 to 67, but uh, uh, they've modernized it quite a bit. I mean, it was built in 1960, so it wasn't very old when I was there. But uh, now they've got it into this fabulous, fabulous stadium, and they've got a great pack practice area. We did not have an indoor practice area like they do today. 
But uh, I enjoyed it down there. It was you know, three seasons of hack. You know and that, then one great season. Yeah. You, you know, I, I, I'm really jumping ahead, but w- what do you think about the Hoosiers of the past two or three years? Seems like they, they've had a lot of potential, uh, but haven't come through when, it, when they needed it. I know they've been to a bowl, which is, was exciting, but uh, they're giving up too many points. You got to have a good defense to hold the other team down to at least, you know, fourteen to twenty-one points a game, and not be giving up thirty and forty. What was your What was your first introduction to the game of football? I mean, you know, coming from Ohio, were you a Browns fan, or were you were you a Buckeyes fan, or what? Um, um, tell us a little bit about the introduction to the game of football to you at a young age. Oh, we listened to Notre Dame and Ohio State and Michigan. Those were the college teams, and uh, mainly we were rooting for Cleveland and Detroit. Detroit is actually closer to Toledo than Cleveland is. You know, it's, it's... Bobby Lane was the quarterback at Detroit when I was young. Otto Graham was the quarterback at, at Cleveland when I was young. So I didn't have a real favorite professional team. Still don't today, but I loved Ohio State. I wanted to go there, but they never offered me a scholarship. What was football? Michigan, what, what was what was high school football like in Ohio? I it was pretty big in you know in Ohio. It's got some of the best players in the country. Ohio State. As a field day with uh, with Ohio football high school football players going there, I know they recruit a lot in Florida and a, and a lot in other states, but quite a few of their players are coming out of northeastern Ohio, where you've got Akron and and Cincinnati is a big a big uh, Ohio uh, hub for football with Cincinnati uh, Elder and schools like that. I have a son-in-law that played football in Cincinnati. They have some good football down there. Was, you know, living... Most of the Toledo Toledo schools, uh, I think we had one team that was the state championship, but that was before they had playoffs. It was just uh, sports writers got together and voted the state champion. So you know, in the state of Indiana, you know, for uh, for up until 1997, they only had one true state champion in basketball, and you know they had the cluster system, and now they have the class system in in uh, football, high school football in the state of Indiana. In Ohio, was did you did you have to win win a certain amount of games to go to the high school playoffs? Did everybody go to the high school playoffs? And and how good was uh, your football team? Oh, my football team wasn't that good. But our basketball teams were, uh, we went, in Ohio, the state tournament starts with everybody and ends up with one winner. By class, we had like four different classes where when I got to Indiana University and I listened to the high school basketball games, I, they had, I think they had classes in the 60s, but I read a book about uh, the only small school that was the state's champion in 1954, the Milan Indians. Bobby Plump was the star for that team. He went on to play at Butler, and he was playing AAU ball, but in 1956, they decided to go with college all-stars as opposed to one AAU team that won the national title. So he never got to play in the, the Olympics. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think. But he I played, mean, the, high, I the college he... stars at that time were like Bill Russell, Oscar Robertson. So I mean, they had some talented teams, talented players. Uh, so, so, so high, high school, high, 
high school basketball in Indiana is, is big time. I mean, they've got squeezed it, seat 10,000 spectators or more. Kind of like what Texas has in football. Yeah, that is a good comparison with uh, Indiana basketball and Texas high school football. That's a great comparison. What? Um, so, so was it, so as a kid, did you kind of did you fantasize about playing for Ohio State or playing for somebody else? When, when does Indiana kind of uh, uh, enter your life, and how do you get recruited by Indiana? And were there other schools that recruited you? And why did you make the choice to go to Indiana? Uh, well, I was. I made trips to Michigan, Indiana, and Kentucky. Kentucky wanted me pretty bad, but they didn't want me as a quarterback. They wanted me as a defensive back. So I says, oh, I don't want to go there and be a defensive back. I want to be a quarterback. Because I was a defensive back and a quarterback in high school. I played both ways. And uh, I had a cousin that went to Michigan University, who was a halfback, who was four years older than I was. And so I went up there, they re- recruited me, but ah, Michigan is, is not a very pretty campus, in my opinion. And uh, Purdue wanted me, I made a visit to Purdue, and that is kind of a plain, plain campus. But uh, when I visited Indiana University, it, uh, that, that's just plain gorgeous. And in my mind, that was the kind of college I wanted to go to. What did the family think? I mean, you know, you know how it's such a big deal today when people choose a university that they're going to play their uh, college athletics at. What was it? Kind of, what was it like? And and who who did, did people come and watch your games from Indiana University? Did someone come to your house to actually get you to sign? How how does how does that work out? Well, I got a visit from. Uh, I got telephone calls asking if I would like to uh, attend Indiana University. And of course, in my mind, if I played in the Big Ten, you know, I had a chance to go to the Rose Bowl. That was my big concern about going to college, that that I could play in the Rose Bowl. And I mean, I had no idea who had played the most and who had never gone to the Rose Bowl. I did did never realize Indiana never went to the Rose Bowl until I got there. Uh, because Michigan and Ohio State went so many times, I just took it for granted that uh, it passed around the league. But uh, I was visited by one of the by the quarterback coach who ended up going to Ohio State after I went there, and an athlete that was on the swimming team, that that councilman swimming team. No, I can't recall his name, but he was one of the All-Americans from the Indiana University swimming uh, team. And they were national champions a couple of times while he was there. So I basically made my choice on how I liked the campus. The school, I was was going into, uh, at first I was going to be going into pre-dentistry. Changed that into business after I got there. I, I just, I just like the campus, the football stadium, and and how enthused they were that they wanted me to go there. So, what was it like to get on campus as a student? And were you nervous that you had made the right or wrong decision? And I'm assuming you did not play freshman football. Was there freshman football? And tell us a little bit about that. In the Big Ten, there was no freshman football. What, another thing I didn't realize, I guess I, I should have learned more about what was going on in college, but I was so busy in high school. I, it was just a big blur college that uh, there were no football games for freshmen in the Big Ten in 1964. They started having freshman football games in 1968 the year after I didn't I finished playing so what did you do what what did you do that freshman year 
nothing but be fodder for the for the varsity. Did you enjoy that? I threw passes. I threw passes. We we mimicked the other team's pass plays, and we had a uh, you know a couple, we just had the receivers in the backs, and we threw passes, and I didn't get rushed, so that was nice, and I I was able to throw the passes, and those guys got killed once they caught the ball. The the linemen they just they just were beaten into the ground by the varsity. I felt sorry for them. They had to wear these big pads on themselves. You know, from their legs all the way up, 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 up on their arms and across their chest. I mean, they they could hardly move, and they just got creamed by the varsity coming to block them or tackle them or whatever they they were doing. I, I really felt sorry for them, but that was what we did our whole freshman year. A couple of years, before, we a couple of years. A couple of years before you get there, what what was Indiana football like? Were they just you know average, ordinary, four or five wins in the Big Ten, maybe even less? I mean, what what did you think you were getting yourself into when you know you got to Indiana University? What kind of football team did you think that you were, you were going to become a part of? Oh, they didn't they didn't have that, that good of, of a team before I got there. I just figured if I played there, I had a chance to go to the Rose Bowl. <laughs> and I, if I played in the Big Ten, at least uh, I had a chance. I saw the guys that were coming in as freshmen because we went down there in in like June to uh, make out our class schedules. And I mean, there, there there was some big talented athletic guys that I was going to school there there with as freshmen, and it turned out they were, and we became the senior class on that Rose Bowl team. We had a not too good of a junior recruitment, but they had some very good players in that. The reason for that was John Pott was his first year when I was a sophomore. Uh, I was recruited by another coach, and then John Pott came in as a sophomore, so that was all I ever played for. And uh, he brought in some some pretty good athletes, the year after I was there. And then when I was a junior, they brought in a tremendous freshman class. Uh, and between our senior class and the sophomore class, and the pretty good junior class, uh, we, had a, we had a very good team in 1967. What was- most of the seniors were on defense. So when we left, they had a hard time stopping anybody after that. So dur- during your freshman year, what was it like? Uh, how, I mean, did you sit in the stands for the football games? Did you also enjoy going to the basketball games? And was it uh, was Coach McCracken still there, or was Lou Watson there at that time? Lou Watson was there. I got to see the Van Arsdale Twins. I mean, they had a very good basketball team. I loved it. Yeah, I was. I I got to be a spectator. I used to get free tickets for the basketball games. We got free tickets for the football games. I was a spectator. We didn't dress for the varsity football games, nor did we make, go on any road trips. But we just practiced every day. But, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I went down and, and wanted to be a basketball player when I first saw the, how exciting the basketball teams were. So they, they said, hey, you can go out for the basketball team, but, you know, we – you want to be a first string football player or a second string football player and a second string basketball player. And I thought about it and I decided I'd rather just concentrate on football. Did you actually try out? Did you actually try out for basketball? No, never, never got that far, but uh, I sure wanted to because we would, we would, go out there and play basketball as football players because they had a separate gym or a floor that went in the field house. And we, we played there while the varsity was practicing on the, on the main floor. That was before they had the, the new assembly hall built. It was a, a Clemson hut and, uh, just past all the dorms, I think it was 17th Street, 
and uh, it, it had dirt floor, so that was where we practiced when we had bad weather. Then they they put stands up and put the, the hardwood floor over over the wooden floor, so you had to walk on it. On the ground was a dirt floor to get to the basketball arena when you were coming out of the locker room, but they had mats to wipe your feet off. And it was about a couple feet off the ground. So when you got to the end of the basketball area, sometimes you might have to jump off and, and land in the dirt. But that was how most uh, college teams had done it up until then. But the new assembly hall, uh, obviously, is just made for basketball, period. Were were you disappointed that there was a coaching change, or did you, you know, n- now that you look back on it, you know, the coaching change was fantastic for what you guys uh, accomplished and did in going to the Rose Bowl, but were you kind of, uh, you know, were you kind of, like, worried, or you were like, well, this is just going to take care of it still, still my idea is to, to, to play in the Rose Bowl, or were, uh, did Pont come in and change a lot of stuff, or was it a, a, a smooth uh, transition? Yeah. Uh, I had no idea what the varsity was doing. No, we 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 just ran the opposing pass plays for the other team. So I had no idea how our offense was set up. But uh, Phil Dickens was the coach that recruited me, and then after my freshman year, he was let go. And I think they gave him a position in the in in administration at Indiana University. Uh, John Pont came in, and I didn't meet him r- right off the bat, but uh, I was out in front of the dorm throwing uh, snowballs uh, with what other guy sat there, and oh, oh, one of the coaches came by that recruited me to go to Ohio University because I had a, a an older cousin that was a linebacker at, at Ohio University in the end. He said, Dave, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm throwing snowballs. <laughs> uh, but he was, uh, I, I really liked him and really wanted to go to Ohio University. But I, I wanted to play in the Big Ten, so that's why I didn't go there. But he was the defensive backfield coach. So that was great because he knew my history and he knew – what I had done in high school. So as a, as a sophomore, I was a starting defensive back. Now tell us about, tell us about that sophomore year where we're during the summer. I mean, and, and tell us a little bit also about uh, preparing for a season. I mean, did you work out on off season? Did they do stuff with weights? What was it like back then? And were you excited about actually getting to ready to play actual football after not playing for a uh, well ap- competitively, you know, within the big yeah, team. after a year off after high school. Yeah, we we lifted weights in the off season as as opposed to playing basketball. Uh you had your choice of things you wanted to do, but I was halfway decent in basketball, so I liked that. Um I was never into lifting weights, but we but we had to do a certain amount of weightlifting uh all three or four years that I was there. They had a tremendous weight room in the in the basement of our lockers were at the end of that Quonson hut where the basketball arena was. I mean it held twelve to fourteen thousand people. In the basement there they had a, a weight room and uh, we had to we had to lift weights uh i don't i think my legs got stronger and obviously the uh, shoulders got stronger i don't think i ever really worked on my arms that much but uh it was a deal that lasted about two months in the spring and before spring football that was something i wasn't used to we practice for like six weeks in the spring. So I played a lot of football before I ever got a chance to uh, play in a real game for Indiana University. 
Budget-wise at the university, were you guys treated the same as basketball, or were you, did you guys think you were treated a little bit better than basketball, or did basketball get more of the good stuff? I mean, uh, uh, how were you treated as like the, you know, how you would rank on, in athletics within the university? Yeah, I think, every, in my opinion, everybody was treated the same. Uh the Van Arsdale twins might have gotten treated a little bit better. I don't know. They were big stars when I was a freshman, and they had been there, you know, for they had been tremendous for three years. I, I only saw them as a senior when I was a freshman. Uh, I, I just know that every girl on campus was trying to <laughs> talk to them. They were six foot five, could <laughs> jump. I could shoot. They could play basketball, and they were good looking. That was jealous. So, what was it like? No, nobody you... knew I was a football player. Okay. I mean, I was just average size. So, so what was it like I that? Five, do, do you, go ahead. I was five eleven and weighed about one eighty. <laughs> So, so you, 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 your first game, do you, is it still a memory in your mind uh, uh, that you think about today? What was it like? Who did you guys play? And, and was the first game of your sophomore year the first game that you started? Or give us a little bit of rundown about your sophomore year and, and football with the Hoosiers. Yeah, I started the first game as a defensive back. Uh, we played Kansas State, and uh, we beat them. I can't tell you what the score was, but I had a a field goal in that game and an interception. So I thought that was a pretty good start for my career. Did you guys... The only one, the only problem was I had practiced so long for that one game that when we got to the next week, I wasn't. I wasn't mentally ready to play. And uh, we played Northwestern, and they killed us. I remember waiting for a pass to come down. I was going to intercept it. And I said, being aggressive and going up and, and, and go high for it, I didn't see the player coming from my left. He went right in front of me and caught the pass, and I was just standing there. I got yelled at for that. But uh, I just wasn't mentally into the game for a couple of games after that first game because I had waited so long to play the first game that I guess my mind just wasn't ready to go after that. But we, uh, I had a good game. We played in Texas and uh, against the University of Texas Longhorns. They had a good team. Uh, it was a night game. They, we end up losing only by about seven points, uh, and uh, we thought that was pretty good. But we, you know, we didn't win. So the next days in practice were were harder than the previous week. And every time we didn't win, we got we got uh, a lot more running to do a lot more running and wind sprints and things. My sophomore year, we were two wins and eight losses. We only played 10 games during the season. And my junior year, we were one win, eight losses, and a tie. Wow. So going into my senior year, our chances of being the Big Ten champions and going to the Rose Bowl were pretty slim. So you literally only won but four games before be getting your senior year. <laughs> huh? I said you literally only won four games going into your senior year. Actually, three. Three. And tied then. So, so one, eight and one, two and eight. Or two and eight, one, eight and one. So, so the beginning of your senior year, do you even – do you even are you still thinking about the Rose Bowl and how does that team come together and tell us about that uh, that that season? I I knew we had different kind of a football team. 
They had speed. And they didn't have speed before that. And the varsity coaches, John Pont, made us lose a bunch of weight because they were they were showing us how Texas wasn't as big as we were, but they were just running right around us. And they, you know, it was obviously true. So we had guys that weighed 280 that came back as 235 pounds. And I didn't have to lose any weight. I, I came back at like 190 pounds. And by the end of my senior season, I weighed 172 pounds. But even at 172 pounds, I should have come in at that because I was a lot quicker. And our sophomores were, they just were fast anyway. Uh, Harry Gonzo was a quarterback, and he was twice as fast as I was. And uh, Terry Cole, who was our fullback, was in my class, and he was an awful good uh, runner straight ahead. He really couldn't dodge back and forth, but he'd run over you really well. He ended up playing with the Miami Dolphins when they were National League champions in 1972. So we had uh, Jake Butcher was from Bloomington. He was a flanker, caught 10 touchdown passes his uh, sophomore year. Uh, we had some very talented players that uh, helped us out a lot. And our defense held our opponents to 14 points per game, and our offense averaged 19 points per game, which is ironic that we beat Purdue 19 to 14 to, to go to the Rose Bowl. They were only like a 70-point favorite against us that game because Minnesota – was undefeated going into the ninth game of the season. We were undefeated going into the ninth game of the season, and they beat us 32-12. to 12. It was one of those things that it was 7-7 seven, seven at halftime in the second half. Everything, everything just went wrong. And uh, we were fumbling on the 10-yard line, and we, we couldn't hold them. They were running an option, and then they'd switch it up with running the dive play. And, uh, so we we were all mad. We thought we could have done a lot better against them. One of their offensive tackles was from Toledo, and I knew him, and uh, I was jealous because we we made the trip to Indiana University together, and I told him I was going to Indiana, and he said, "Well." He, he was going to Minnesota before he was going to make his decision. He ended up playing pro football as an offensive tackle. When he was in Toledo, he was a tight end, very talented. But uh, we, we had one more week to go. If, if we beat Purdue, you know, we had a chance to go to the Rose Bowl. Purdue beat Minnesota 42-12 the week before we played Minnesota. So we lost 33 to seven. They got beat by Purdue 42 to 12. So what kind of an underdog were we playing Purdue? And Purdue had uh, Mike Phipps at quarterback, Leroy Keys, Harry Williams at fullback. They had a talented team. If uh, they beat us, they were they were going to be going to the Rose Bowl. Well, they couldn't go to the Rose Bowl that year because they had been the year before. So Minnesota would have been the 1968 representative for uh, the Big Ten in the in the Rose Bowl. So we we jumbled things up quite a bit there by beating Purdue. We just practiced hard and followed what the coaches said. And Terry Cole ran. Uh, two plays right up the middle for touchdowns. We were ahead 19 to seven and uh, they came down and scored another touchdown. So it made it 19 to four. They got all the way down again to the three yard line where I had 
tackled Mike Phipps on the three yard line, which it was like, okay, I got to get him because if, if I miss him, the game's over. Cause there was only like two minutes to go in the game. And luckily he slipped a little bit and I was able to, uh, knock him backwards so that he didn't get into the end zone. Then the next play, Curry Williams was hit by one of our linebackers, Ken Kazmierich, and he fumbled, and Mike Boffman, the safety, recovered the ball on the one-yard line. And our offense ran three plays, and we had to punt. So John Eisenbarger was a halfback, and he was a kicker, and punted the ball from the – back of the end zone and it flew over everybody's head that was on defense. So they had the ball with two minutes to go first and 10 on about their 40 yard line. And uh, we ended up stopping them and winning the game. I got lucky in that Leroy Keys got behind me one time and the ball went right through his hands in the end zone. That was that was scare, a scary feeling by me. I surely would have hated to have been the player that lost the game for Indiana. But uh, I had hit him earlier in the game, and I guess, unbeknownst to me, I had cracked his ribs. So when he caught the ball, it hit him right where I cracked his ribs, and he flinched. The ball went right through his hands. So that was that was a lucky play by us, but I don't know. I hate to see any every anybody get hurt, but sure as heck, glad I cracked his ribs so that he flinch. He was a tremendous player at at Purdue. He was a junior that year. Did you guys know what you were getting into when um, um, you were, knew that you were going to play USC and? And, you know, after the Purdue game and before you go to the Rose Bowl, tell us a little bit about that uh, that feeling you had and, and you accomplished one of your goals of uh, wanting to go to the Rose Bowl and, and what was the travel like and what was that whole game experience like? Oh, it was exciting. The whole campus was just, just going nuts after that Saturday night. And... Uh, Everybody was having a party. Uh, on Sunday, we met uh, in the student union at Indiana with the team to have dinner on Sunday night because the dormitories didn't serve dinner on Sunday night. So they they used to give us money to go out and eat. This particular night, they had a dinner for us, and that's when they told us that the Big Ten had voted us to go to the Rose Bowl which was an exciting moment. And um, they said that they would, we would be practicing starting in the middle of December. Actually, it wasn't even the middle of December. Near, like the third week in November it was like, we had a, like two weeks off. And then we started practicing in, in the, the cold at our stadium. And then uh, near the end of December, we, we went to California, which was really nice to spend that time out there because the weather was warm. But we practiced hard out there. There was a practice field outside the Rose Bowl uh, in the Pasadena Valley, whatever that Aurora Valley, whatever they call that, because there's mountains all the way around it. It's just a gorgeous setting for a football stadium. And we were treated like kings out there. We got to get a chauffeured limousine to take us wherever we wanted at night. And uh, you had to be 21 to get into their nightclub. So we we would have to weed out all the younger players. Because at that particular time, I was 21. So we we didn't drink very much, but uh, we certainly enjoyed the uh, atmosphere, uh, what was going on there. But we had to be in back at our hotel fairly early, so we didn't get to party a whole lot. But we we enjoyed it, and uh, the sophomores who weren't 21 
had their own little own little place that let them that let them get in and in in downtown Pasadena. So they had fun too. But uh, the actual game the night before we stayed in a monastery that was different. And uh, the game, uh, I was nervous, and uh, it seemed like, you know, we were practicing forever to play this one football game. I mean, I rewatched film of of US, uh, USC, watched film of O.J. Simpson, and uh, their team was huge. It looked like a professional football team to me. When we were on the field and I was defensive back and they got down in their three-point stance, I couldn't see O.J. Simpson. And that's how big their line was. I mean, they were at least six foot five. The smallest guy was six foot five. They they were going six, seven, two sixty, you know, and be lightning fast. And that is the best football team I ever saw. Uh, luckily, we, we actually stopped them quite a few times. They scored. Uh, they went all the way down the field and fumbled on the one-yard line. Uh, before they got there, I had tackled their fullback. Unfortunately, I got my head in his knees, and I was knocked goofy. I remember getting up off the ground and going to the other side of the field because you just had to get off the field. There was no penalty for going, you know, on the USC side where I was. And I can still remember kneeling down, waiting for somebody to come get me because I couldn't go anywhere. I just, I was dizzy and didn't know what was going on. And I was looking at people sitting in the <laughs> and they were looking at me like, what are you doing? And finally, the trainer came over, and I saw him, and I got up and walked to the other side of the field with him. And I, I I didn't know this until I watched the film after the game, but I missed a couple of series of defensive downs before I woke up on the bench trying to figure out where I was looking around the whole Rose Bowl. And I'm going, oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm in the Rose Bowl. <laughs> and, uh, this, you know, I'm, I'm just, just completely – don't know what's happening. And I looked up and I saw one of our tight ends, uh, Al Gage, drop the ball in the end zone. And I looked at the down marker and he, it, it, it flashed till fourth down. And I went, oh, we're going we're gonna to kick a field goal. And I don't know. I kick. And John Pont yelled, Dave, Dave, get your string on and go in and kick. I, I had to in order not to go straight under the ball and kick it straight up in the air, which I had done a few times, I tied my toe back with a string around my ankle so that my my foot was cocked up and my toe was cocked up. And I said, they used like a two-inch T at that time. It, it just was a flat piece of, uh, like, foam covered with tape. And uh, we didn't kick off the ground like they did in the in the, in the pros, so I, that's why I was able to get away with tying my toe back, and so I was able to swing my leg and, and get the ball high that way. And uh, just before I, they, they called my name, and then I knew I said I got my shoestring out and went in the game, and I I am like still three quarters out. And I can just remember saying, just watch the ball, just watch the ball. So when the ball came back, I went forward and just concentrated on seeing the ball. So I my leg and uh, looked up, and it was blasting away sky high, right down through the middle of the goal post. I was thrilled. And uh, so the rest of the game, I had to play with a headache not knowing what we were supposed to do. And we did three things. We played man to man, we played zone and we rotated to the ball. And I used to have to ask the safety, Mike Boffman, hey, what do we do on this play? He said, we play, we're playing zone or, you know, we're playing man to man. And uh, then I knew what, 
what to do, but I just could not remember the different defenses on what we had to do. And uh, while I was knocked out, I, I got the opportunity to knock out O.J. Simpson. Wow. Which wasn't a great tackle, but he came, he came running off tackling two of our players that had a hold of him. <laughs> and he, was, he was just standing there. And a uh, whistle had blown it, and I had my little 10-yard run. And I just nailed him in the head with a face mask at the top of my head. And he went down on his back, like, instantly. And I went down on my back because I kind of, like, left my feet to get to his face mask. And because he was, like, six foot two. And I'm on my back. And now I've got another headache. I'm busy in heck. And he jumps up and says, damn, that was a good hit. And I'm going... In my mind, I'm going, I can't believe you got up. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just baffled that he got up. And I mean, I just nailed him as hard as I, I could hit anybody. So I'm watching him. I'm on my back watching him. And he takes about four steps and falls down. And I went, ah. <laughs> and then they, they took him out of the game and they were giving him smelling salts. And the, the score of the game at that particular time was 7-3, uh, to three, and he came back in and scored another touchdown, unfortunately. We ended up losing 14-3, to three, but they, they scored tons of points in other games. And so we actually held them to about half what they normally score. It's just that our, our offense just didn't score enough points. It's bad when a defensive player scores all your points. But you still got your uh, Rose Bowl ring. Actually, we got a watch. Oh, we really? Were out there for Christmas. Yeah, it was a Lon, Lon Jean's watch. It was, it was gold. It's pretty sharp. I still have it. I, it fell apart, so I got to take it in to get repaired. But uh, we got our Rose Bowl ring, which is, holy cow, it's like one of those Super Bowl rings. We had a couple of our players that played in the Super Bowl for Miami of Ohio. I mean, the, the Miami Dolphins, uh, Terry Cole and Doug Cruzan played for the Dolphins, so they helped design the ring. They gave us the ring after 20 years in 1987, and we had to like donate as much as we could towards, you know, the athletic department, you know, because it was, I think it cost like $1,400 for these rings. Right. And they were 10 karat gold and they had nine diamonds in them. And the nine diamonds make up the eye and in the, in the glass part of the ring. And they're huge. And it's exciting to wear that. I had to get mine enlarged last year. But when they enlarged it, they made it look like it was brand new. So I'm excited to wear that around again where it fits. What did you want to do after so you graduated? And now so everybody goes, ooh. <laughs> and I said, oh, this is from the Rose Bowl. Indiana never played in the Rose Bowl. Yes, they I'll did. Say, well, it's been a few years ago, but yes, we did. Indiana University had a great football team in 1945. That's the only other Big Ten championship in football Indiana's ever won. And they won in 45 and we won in 67. Well, Dave, believe it or not, you didn't think you could do it, but we've almost gone an hour. Well, that's good. (laughs) I hope that it was as enjoyable to your listeners. Uh, and I'll try and catch this at 7 o'clock on the uh, internet. And I was a computer programmer after college, so I'm really good on the internet. And uh, I'll see if I can find it and listen to it. Hopefully I haven't embarrassed Indiana University or myself that much. And thank you very much for calling and asking all the questions, and I hope that... Uh, your fans are entertained by this. Uh, 
and uh, I hope that everybody stays healthy from this. I call it the Chinese uh, Communist Party flu.